G'day everyone, welcome back to the Warthog Project. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to go back to the basics. I get a lot of questions in YouTube comments and on the Discord about connecting switches to computers for the purposes of flight simulators or racing simulators, whatever it may be. I've done some videos in the past on Leo Bodners that I used and Arduinos. However, I just wanted to show you something that is very, very, very cheap and an easy way to get a switch to work with your computer in any Windows game. We'll jump out onto the workbench and I'll show you what card I'm going to use and we're just going to wire up a switch and get it working in Windows. Alright, so this is what we're going to be using today. A normal toggle switch, got it out of the spares container and a normal push button. This is the same um, arcade style push button that I use for the master caution indicator. Uh, this is an Arduino Pro Micro. So it's not a Nano, it's not an Uno, you need to use a Pro Micro, it's also commonly known as a Leonardo. This has native USB support in it, so with the simple code that I'm going to show you how to get and flash to it in a second, when you connect this to a computer, it will show up in Windows as a generic joystick. It's similar to what a Leo Bodner or a commercial USB card would be. So these will come like this. Uh, you can choose to solder these on and use um, DuPont connectors if you want to. I'm not going to though, I'm just going to solder direct to this. I'll do that because most of the time once you've connected it all up you'll never look at it ever again and it'll be hidden in the cockpit somewhere and I just like to minimise the points of failure. So if one of these connections is loose you'll have failures whereas if it's soldered directed to the board it's less likely to fail on me. Here you can see the size of it, it's nice and compact, you can hide it really easily in behind the panels and it's easily six inches long at least. Right so this is where I got it, $5.84 cheap as compared to the almost $100 for a Leo Bodner. Again you have to make sure that it is a Pro Micro because it's got a different chip in it and it has native USB support. Alright so what I'll show you now, this is the Arduino joystick library. Um, I'll add a link in the description there. Basically you just load this onto the Arduino and then it will show up in Windows as a generic USB controller and all you have to do is solder your switches to the pinouts. Um, you can see that it's got a whole bunch of different examples, uh, X and Y axes, you can have a flight controller there with 32 buttons, X and Y and a throttle axis, so it's a great bit of kit. Um, I'm just going to keep it simple and just use the joystick test today uh, just to solder up those two push buttons and show you how to get it working in DCS. So all you need to do is click on the code, download the zip, I'll save that on the desktop. So then you just need to upload that into your Arduino library, so you just open up your Arduino IDE. Now obviously I've already loaded it because I've used it before, um, but you just go to sketch, include libraries, add zip library, and you would show it on your desktop where you just saved it. Double click on that and it will load up the library. And then you can just go to the whole bunch of examples and you'll find that there is a whole bunch of joystick ones here now. Uh, driving controller, flight controller, gamepad, etc, etc. Uh, so I've opened up joystick button because I'm just using buttons for this video. Alright, so this is absolutely not a um, tutorial video on how to code in Arduino. I'm absolutely not an expert at that. Um, but you can see right here, it's it basically says you ground digital pins 9, 10, 11 and 12 to press the joystick buttons 0, 1, 2 and 3. And you can see just down here in the code how we set that up. 9, 10, 11 and 12 are now input pull-ups. So if I wanted to add more, all I'd have to do is copy and paste those lines and change the pin numbers. But for the purpose of this example, we're just going to do 9 and 10. So I'll solder a switch to 9 and a switch to 10 and we'll test it in DCS and show how it works. So I'll just connect this up to the computer. Uh, so it is now connected to the computer. You can see I haven't actually soldered anything onto it yet. I'm going to upload the library first and then I'll solder the, the switches on. So we'll just point it towards the correct one. So you just have to select Leonardo from the drop down box. And then the port is COM20. You can see right there. And then we'll upload that to the board. Now if we go to Windows and we go USB Game Controllers, you'll see that the Arduino Leonardo now shows up in Windows with accesses and a whole bunch of buttons. Um, all I need to do now is solder up switches and it will work straight out of the box. $5.84 this costs.
so there's the basic circuit. Again, this is not a coding tutorial and it's not a correct soldering technique tutorial. Um, this is very, very temporary. I'm not even going to use this in the sim. It's only to show you how I do it. So now the switch there is connected to ground and to pin 10 and the push button here is connected to ground and pin 9. You can see that I've opened up game controllers and now when I push the buttons, that's button 1, that's button 2. You can see that when I flick the switch, it holds button 2 down. And when I turn it off, it releases button two. All right, what we'll do now is we'll jump into DCS and I will show you the problem with this switch here and how I got around it. Of course DCS needs to update. Why wouldn't it? Oh, of course you're gonna take f an hour. All right, so here we are in instant action mission in DCS. I'm just gonna show you how I program these switches in DCS. Um, so all you have to do is push escape and go to uh, adjust controls. And you'll see that the Arduino Leonardo is now just here as an um, input device. So what we'll do is we'll map this switch here to the TGP on and off switch because it's prominent in the cockpit and it is a simple one position toggle. It's not two positions. So let's find the laser. No, sorry, what do we say? The TGP on and off switch. So we just open that and we assign this switch to it. Joy button two. And then we'll find something else that the push button can go to. The push button can be the master caution switch. Okay. Alright, so I apologise for the terrible graphics here. I, this is the workshop computer, so it's like a 15-year-old PC that struggles to run DCS at the best of times. Alright, so what I'll do now is I'll just flick this switch and you'll see that the TGP will go on. Here's where the problem is. Turning this switch off won't send a signal to DCS. See how the TGP didn't work? That's because it's the same as a push button, it's the same as a keyboard. If I held the A button down, you send a signal, but when you release it, there's no signal. So DCS doesn't know to flick the switch to the off position. It, it requires a toggle. So if I wanted to turn it on, I'd have to turn it on, and if I wanted to turn it off, I'd have to turn it off again. Now people get around this in a whole bunch of different ways. One of the ways you can do it is have a on-on switch, so you could have another pin to the Arduino to tell it to send a signal in the on position and to send a signal in the off position. The problem with that is you require essentially double the amount of these because you'd need two signals for every single switch in the cockpit as opposed to one. Push buttons, it's not a problem because it's just the same as a keyboard press. It's just the toggle switches where this is a problem. I'll show you this awesome community mod that's out there that changes DCS control bindings to allow you to have a two position switch. Alright, so I found out about this mod because I logged a support ticket on the ED Forums Discord because the R210 was missing a whole bunch of inputs um, and somebody said just use Quoggles and I was like, what's Quoggles? And then they sent me this link. So this is, Quoggles is a guy who created the DCS input command injector. This is a mod for DCS that allows you to make your own custom commands um, for every aircraft. So you can jump in and create your own, but there's also a whole DCS community keybinds file that's done by Monk, Monk Wolf. So nearly every single button in every aircraft is already mapped for you. There are a few that I've noticed are missing, which I can program myself, but I think that's a um, another video on its own, that one. So all you have to do is download this as a zip file. See, there's a couple of ways to install it. You can do it manually by changing some LUAs in DCS itself, or you can use OVGME. Um, I'm using OVGME now for all my mods. It's made life a lot easier. Uh, you download the DCS community keybind. This is just one file that goes in your saved games DCS folder. All right, so here we are back in DCS in the instant action mission. Let's zoom in on that switch again. We'll jump here into adjust controls and we'll search for the TGP again. And now this time you can see there's a whole bunch of different commands available. Uh, instead of just the on off, there's now on else off for a two way switch. There's just on, there's off else on for a two way switch and there's off. So we want it to be on, but if it's not on off, so we use this one here. So I just program that. And now that should work. Let's try it. You can see that it now knows that if the button's pushed down, it should be on, and if the button's released, it should be off. So it will work as the switch does in the game. And you can also do the same thing for push buttons now. So if, I, if you wanted to hold that down and do something and release it to do something else, you can do that. 
you can also jump into the LUAs and create your own. So if you if you want specific commands or one button switch to do a whole bunch of different things, you can have it do that. So that brings us to the end of this video. Thanks Ed for watching. The next video I'm gonna do is going to be around the same sort of basic thing, but we're gonna be talking about how to get a signal out of DCS and into the cockpit. So a flashing light or an indicator using DCS BIOS. So thanks very much for watching. I will see you guys on the next one. Where is my pickle? Oh, what's that? That's a... Pull up, pull up. And... Pickle? Oh, there's a Sam right at me. Oh, fuck, there goes my wing. Five minutes later. Hello, I'd like to ask you some questions about what just happened.